All right then, gang. So now we have this structure in place in our JavaScript so that when a user types into a field, what's happening is we're listening for that key up event. We're finding out the name property of that field right here, and we're using this to query the patterns right here to get the appropriate regular expression to test against. So we're passing in that regular expression and the field itself, whichever input box it is, into this validate function. We're testing that regular expression against the field value over here. So we're getting whatever the user types into the field right there. If it's true, we're adding a class of valid. If it's false, we're adding a class of invalid. So this is all working. And now all we really need to do is add on the rest of the regular expressions for the rest of the form fields. So in this video, I'm going to show you three of them. The username, the password, and the profile slug. The email will do in the next video because it's a little bit more complex. So the username, first of all, the username must be alphanumeric and contain between five to 12 characters. So any lowercase letter, any uppercase letter, and any digit between zero and nine, and the whole thing's gotta be between five and 12 characters long. So this is pretty simple to do. So first of all, we need to give this a property name in the patterns object. And again, this is important. It must match whatever the name property is on that input field. So on this one, it's username. So let's grab that thing right there and paste it in right here. So that's the property name. And this regular expression is contained within the two forward slashes. We'll do our caret first of all, and our dollar sign to mark the start and the end of the string. Then what we want to do is create a character set. And I said that this username could be any uh, letter A to Z. So let's do A to Z first of all. It can be case insensitive. So we'll add the I flag on at the end so they can do uppercase or lowercase. We also said that it can be any number from zero to nine. Now we could do zero to nine in there as well. But instead, we could just do backslash D, the meta character for a digit. And that's the same thing, zero to nine. Finally, we need to say that this is between five and 12 characters long. So there we go, that is it for the username. And if we refresh over here, we can start typing into the username field. Notice at the minute there's no class associated with it, but if we start typing in something, we can see invalid at the minute. That's because it's only two characters long and it needs to be at least five characters long. But when it reaches five characters, we get the valid class right there. And this is true all the way up to 12 characters. So the minute it gets to 13, we get invalid. Take that away, it's valid. And we can add numbers as well. So something like that, this would be valid just as long as it's between five and 12 characters. Sweet, so now we've done the first input field over here for the username. Now, the next one I want to tackle is the password. And the password, again, must be alphanumeric. But also, now we can have the at sign, underscores, and hyphens. And this must be between 8 and 20 characters long. So, let's go over here. And this time, we want to call this one password because this is the name property of the password field. All right. So, this password, again, will contain in the two forward slashes for our regular expression. We'll do our carrot and our dollar to mark the beginning and the end of the test string. And same as above, we could say something like this, A to Z, and also the digit character. Now, that would get us any letter and number, which we said we could have over here. But notice this, we also said underscores. And what captures underscores as well as letters and numbers? Well, it's the word meta character. Remember, we covered that in a previous tutorial, and it looks something like this. It's backslash W. And that says, okay, match any letter, uppercase or lowercase, any digit from zero to nine, and also underscores. So we've captured a lot of what's allowed here using just one meta character. So all we need to account for now is the at symbol and the hyphen. So we can place that in the character set. We can do an at and a hyphen. And now we're saying in this position, match any of these things. So any word character, any at symbol or a hyphen. We also want this to be between eight and 20 characters long. So we'll save that and see if this works. Head over here and refresh. So the password, let's just do test. One, two, three, four. So if we scroll down here, we can see now we've got valid for the password. If I delete a character, it goes invalid because it becomes seven characters long and we need at least eight. So test one, two, three, four works. If we add an at symbol, that works. 
an underscore, that's still valid, hyphen, still valid, but if we add something other than these things, such as a plus symbol, it becomes invalid. Likewise, if we go over the limit of 20 characters, it becomes invalid as well. All right. So now we've sorted that, one thing I do want to do with this field is go into the HTML and change the type equal to password so that it hides what we're typing because that's typically what you do. Refresh and I'm just going to type something in here for a password and we can see now that that is valid. Cool. Okay, so finally the profile slug. So the profile slug is something in a URL. So say it's, uh, you know, mysite.com forward slash uh, my hyphen profile. This here would be the slug. So we're saying the slug can contain only lowercase letters, numbers and hyphens and be between 8 and 20 characters long again. So let's create a regular expression for this. If we go into the validation.js file, this time the name property is called slug. So let's call this slug here. Again, two forward slashes first of all, then the character say the start, then the dollar to say the end. So we said any lowercase letter only. So we'll do A to Z. We also said any number. So let's do backslash D for the digit meta character. And finally, we said we can have hyphens as well. So let's add a hyphen in there as well. And we want this to be between eight and 20 characters long. So we'll add that in at the end. So this should hopefully work. If I refresh over here, let's inspect this field. Currently, no class. I'll start to type something in like ninja. It's invalid because it's still not eight characters long. So I'll do a hyphen and I'll do page. Now this is valid. I could do page one and it's valid. Page two because we're allowing numbers as well. But if I add something like an at symbol, it becomes invalid or an underscore invalid. Or if I go too long over the 20 characters, it's also going to become invalid. Awesome. So now we've covered four of the fields in total, username, password, telephone, and the profile slug. So all we really need to do now is the email and then add some finishing touches as well.